So even adding RPM increased the adjust R squared from 0.679 to 0.6941. So, okay, one last try. Let's see if we can add a variable here uh, plus the weight of the car and our adjusted R squared. Now let's look at our R squared. Even though the R squared went from 0 0.7107 to 0 0.7111, it went up slightly, as it almost always does. The adjusted R squared 0 0.6941 went down slightly to 0 0.691. Now why? Because basically what happens with the adjusted R squared formula is if the R squared doesn't increase enough to make up for the fact that in the denominator of that adjusted R squared formula, you're subtracting one, it uh, will, if the R squared doesn't go up enough to compensate for the fact that you're changing the number of explanatory variables by one, the adjusted R squared goes down. So, again, it's not the best or the only way to, de to decide how many variables to include, but it's a common factor that people do look at. Now, uh, let's not look at adjusted R squared um, and R squared as much anymore. I want to look at the parts of the R squared for uh, this equation and look at residuals a little bit more. Now, if you want to look at the residuals of a regression, let's look at a plot of the residuals. Let's in order to do this, you can just do a plot of the regression itself, car.reg5 in this case. And this is going to bring up a series of diagnostic plots to see if we can detect some problems. Now, again, we're going to go into these more later on, but just to introduce you to some of these, since we're focusing on residuals, especially in OLS calculations and formulas, it says click or hit enter for next page. Now this is that residuals versus fitted plot I was telling you about where we can try to see if there's a pattern in the residuals and I, I see a little bit of one and R is trying to point out that maybe there's a little of, bit of a pattern with this red line but it's nothing extremely obvious. But another problem we'll see with the residuals again we'll, we'll go into more detail as we go along is I see that the residuals here are small, close to zero. The residuals over here are close to, uh, well, they're, they're large. Sorry, let me, let me go back and start that again. I accidentally clicked before I meant to. Now, we see some really large positive and some larger negative residuals as we go on the right side. And that's a problem with a regression called heteroscedasticity. We'll study more later. This is a plot to see if our residuals are normally distributed. Do they have a normal distribution? It's called a normal QQ plot. And if our residuals do have a normal distribution, they should fall on this little dotted line. And they do on the left side, but on the right side they don't. Especially this, it gives us the numbers of the observations that we should be worried about here. And so that's another problem with this regression. This is another way to look at the size of the, regress of the uh, residuals are they bigger or smaller in different regions? And here we can see they're smaller than they are on this end, a scale location plot. And this graph is seeing if there are any cars in the data set that are really by themselves having a lot of leverage or a big impact on the results. Is there one or two observations that are having undue influence on our estimates. And basically what you're looking for are any way out here in the upper right hand corner. And it gives us numbers of ones that we might want to look at just to double check, make sure there are no typos, 59, 11, and 57. And so we can go back into the data set. For example, this uh, number 59 here, let's type fix the data set. Uh, car 93. And this way we can look at that observation, number 57, 
is a Mazda RX-7. It's sporty. Its price is 32.5 thousand back in 1993. Its average price, uh, the minimum, average, and max are all the same here. And so you might just want to double check: is there something different about the RX-7 than the other cars? Well, it has a rotary engine. That's different. And so maybe uh, there are some reasons why we might want to leave it out. But you only want to um, delete an observation if there's a really clear good reason to delete it. Now, let's look cl more closely at this R squared, 0 0.7111. If you remember, we were calculating it uh, by hand with, with our sample data as the explain sum of squares divided by the total sum of squares or 1 minus the residual sum of squares divided by the total sum of squares. And so how can we get an idea about how big these numbers are easily in R? Well, the total sum of squares uh, is, as I mentioned, it's just the variance of the dependent variable times n minus 1. And so we have 93 observations in this data. And so n minus 1 is 92. So we can get the total sum of squares just by asking, what is the variance of the price? And then multiplying that times 92. And that tells us that our total sum of squares is 8584. Now, how can we get an idea of either the explained sum of squares or the residual sum of squares? Well, that's pretty easy, too, because anytime you do a regression, and you give it a name like car.reg5. We can look at the residuals by a simple command like resid and the name of the regression. Car. Whoop. Car.reg5. And this will just spit them out on the screen for us. There are all the residuals for all of our observations. But we don't really want to see all the residuals. What we want to do is square them and add them up. And so we can do that. We can do the sum of the resid of car dot reg five um, squared. Right? It just makes sense. Sum of the residuals of this car regression. So square them, add them up. And we get that the sum of the squared residuals are twenty four seventy nine. We calculated that the total sum of squares was 8584 and so if we simply do 1 minus the residual sum of squares remember the residual sum of squares let's just calculate this um, I'm going to give this a name RSS equals and I'm going to give the variance a name uh, times n minus 1, TSS. I'm going to give it a name. Now if I just want to look at what's RSS divided by TSS, this tells me that 28.8878% of the variation cannot be explained with this model. Now if we just do 1 minus T, uh, RSS over TSS, that gives us the R squared for this model, which is 0.7111. Exactly the same R squared that we got in the output of the regression. Now, why would we want to do this by hand if it gives us the answer? Well, because we want to understand what it's doing and where this number for R squared is coming from. Just looking at the output without really making sure you understand what it means is a mistake, I think. You'll never be able to do research of inequality if you don't really understand exactly what you're doing and why. And is there anything else we need to do here? Um, well, let's, let's, since we're doing things by hand, let's calculate the adjusted R squared by hand to make sure we review that in a different way here. So we have the R squared. The adjusted R squared formula looks like this. 1 minus 1 minus right the r squared so I'm going to put that in parentheses so it's 1 minus 1 minus the r squared and then that 1 minus r squared which is 
all this part is multiplied by n minus 1, which is 93 minus 1, divided by n minus k minus 1, which are those degrees of freedom right here, 86. Or we can just spell it out, n 93 minus k, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 explanatory variables, 6 minus 1. And it tells us that the adjusted R squared is 0.6909678, or 0.691, which is what it tells us here, except now we've calculated it to more decimal places. And so I'm going to end it here, and I'm going to hit the X and save my image so that I can have results later.